hello, hello. Y'all say hello. Looks like there's a few people that are already here waiting. I know everybody doesn't do it live, so forever, for whomever is here tonight right now, awesome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, oh, I can hear me. <laughs> Let me turn my volume down there. Um, so say hello. Let me know you're here. I feel like sometimes on these stitch outs, I'm talking to no one as I go through a project, which is fine because I know eight o'clock on a Thursday night probably doesn't work for everybody. So the good thing is that you can watch this anytime um, that works for you and you can do the project whenever is best for you. So that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, Yvonne, hello. I see you're here. Um, so I wanted to hopefully chat with you guys for a little bit because this is the first back to school box. I'm so excited about this. These are really items that sell well for me. Um, back to school is something where moms are, you know, getting excited. They really want to um, have the best and cutest things for their kids when they go back to school. It's picture perfect moments that they want, um, you know, their kids to have and memories to have. So, you know, the items that I've selected, I really feel like are going to be things that you can really sell in your groups that are just um, just really cute items that, um, that I feel like you can add to your shops, share with your friends, your neighbors, and all those around. Um, so tonight we're gonna do, I always like to start with the one that's the easiest um, out of the four weeks just so we can kind of, you know, get our groundwork and we can chat for a little bit. I can answer any questions that you may have. Um, but so tonight we're gonna be doing the lunchbox. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because lunchbox and book bags are huge, huge. All summer long for me, people reaching out asking, you know, when, uh, if, they, if I could add a name to a book bag, if I could add their kid's monogram, if they could drop it off, if they could send one to me, you know, straight from Amazon. It's just a skill that's really good to master. Now, there have been some along the ways that I have gotten and I've been like, I'm sorry, I can't do this bag. Pottery Barn. Oh my goodness. So a lot of people want to save on the personalization and they'll get a Pottery Barn bag and, and, and their, their intentions are just to get someone local to monogram it for them. Well, a lot of these Pottery Barn bags have pockets on them where you would be ruining the bag, making, you know, a pocket or a mesh area useless by monogramming through it. Um, I feel like they do it on purpose. I'm sure they don't. But, um, and I've also heard from several folks that the monogramming that, that Pottery Barn does, the personalization they do, is really subpar. And I've actually had several things that people have brought to me and they're like, look what I got back from Pottery Barn. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe they change that as years go on. Um, hey, Kristen. Um, oh, good. Yeah, seersucker book bags. Those are huge. Um, you need some help with those. I've, I've done a million of those. I've sold those in the past as well. Um, I don't think I have any in my shop right now. I think the only bag I have is um, the duffel bag, but I will be adding some um, seersucker book bags as well. Now that I have my standalone Shopify site up, I believe I'm going to go ahead and um, sign up to be, or request to be a, um, a member of Mint. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Oment. They have just such good um, seersucker items when it comes to book bags and, and cosmetic bags. And um, I have bought seersucker things from the past from overseas or from buying groups. And the quality I've just never fallen in love with. I just know I've had some really good ones and some that really aren't good ones. And so I don't want to invest a bunch of money. When, and even from the same company, so like I'll get a sample from somebody, they'll send me, you know, I'll order 50, and then the next 50 that I order, you know, were like a whole three steps down, you know, quality-wise. So I think by joining um, or, you know, requesting to uh, be part of Mint or O-Mint, um, that I can have that consistency with the quality that they have um, created over the years. Um, the, the only problem is the price point of theirs is certainly much higher than, you know, when we can get them ourselves. So, hey, Michelle. Hi, Terry. So we're in California. We're in Colorado. We're in Ohio. Um, 
awesome mint amazing it's a love that cotton kind of place so definitely love that cotton um love my love that cotton is my favorite they actually used to have um backpacks and lunch boxes and i certainly bought from them when they did because i loved the style that they had um they were very easy to embroider and um, they were basically made for embroidering um but they decided based on quality issues as well to not carry that product anymore um so i think it was just a decision that um you know that company made for the same reason that i i kind of come to my own um the quality that they were starting to receive was just not what they felt comfortable selling uh, but yes yeah, seersucker is huge um as far as like the toddler little um book bags when moms are sending their babies to um preschool for the first time um texas hey terry um two michelles awesome and where else from nola uh, awesome well i'm in north carolina for those that, for those that don't know i live um in pineal shores which is on the um beach of of north carolina so eastern north carolina um so i am easter standard time so i guess you guys are all different time zones i don't know what's best for you guys as far as times um, I just kind of picked this time thinking it might be good for others. Um, I know there's 13 watching now, um, so that's awesome. I probably, there are some that were in the past stitch out group and that's awesome too. Um, if you're just watching, then that's, that's the welcome. Um, I, I kind of went back and forth trying to decide, do I, um, you know, take people out if they don't have this box of the group, but I don't think so. I think we can kind of continue to learn from each other and en enjoy this interaction. So I welcome you to, um, comment, ask questions, you know, whatever you'd like. Um, so <laughs> you're eight my 8 p.m. is 5 p.m., which is probably really hard. 5 p.m. would be really hard for me to come down. You know, honestly, like 9 p.m. is my favorite time because I can put my kids to bed and then not worry about what they're doing, um, although they're not always in bed at 9. And now it's summertime, so we really don't have as, you know, set schedule as we do during the school year. Okay, so the first stitch out we're going to do is the um, um, lunch box, like I said. And I wanted to introduce you to these lunch boxes because I think they are awesome. Let me see if I can get my printout here. Um, sorry, guys. I thought I thought of everything to have sitting out when we started, but obviously I had such a busy day. I don't know if you guys watch my lives when I'm on, um, on YouTube, but I do lives a bunch because it helps motivate me when I've got a lot to do. And today I had over 37 items that I needed to monogram or actually not monogram. I mean, well, embroider, right? Um, different things for different items. Um, so basically I had made myself like a, um, <laughs> last night trying to motivate myself, all the different things that I was needing to do today. And there were 37 and I, I'm getting really close guys. I've worked really hard on, all day. Uh, taking a couple of breaks. This, my kids were in camp today for the um, last day for this week. Um, so anyway, really excited about how much I've gotten done. I did, you know, over 20 towels. I did six fishing shirts. I did six applique shirts. I did two dresses. I still have five applique shirts to go, two shell bags, um, two mask bags, and one train applique shirt. So, um, but I can do those tomorrow as well, and that's okay. Um, Let's see, I hear my puppy coming down. She hears me talking to you guys. Hi, Harbor. Um, you wanna say hello? So I don't know if y'all remember how little my puppy used to be, but here's how big she is now. Oh my gosh, and she's still a puppy. <laughs> she's gonna kick something. So this is a giant snowger puppy, and she is um, 16 weeks, so she's still a little tiny puppy, and she still gets into and I don't normally let her in here, but my husband's traveling. So as I feel like he does every Thursday, just because I picked this day to be live. So there's my sweet puppy. Um, she's a big girl. Okay, stop it. Stop, 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 stop. Go this way. One thing that I don't do well is when I my trash can gets full, you know what I do? I just keep throwing things down there. So I've got a lot of trash and she would love to eat all that. Okay, so I just wanted to pull out um, what we were doing and 
like I said, the first one is going to be, um, <laughs> she's cute. She's big, but she's cute. Um, Harbor Stop. Ooh. Oh, please. Sorry, guys. Like, literally, she puts her teeth on everything. And she's got some tape stuck to her, so she's a little annoyed about that. Go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. All right. Get her out of here. Out of here. Um, okay, so then um, the other, oh, hello, hello, from Rhode Island, I guess. Um, all right, so let me pull this up because what I just pulled up was not it. File. Here we go. Okay, our back to school box. So, okay, we're doing a lunch box. You can, um, we're, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then next week, oh, I love, love, love this item that I found. It is the um, first day of school banner. I don't know if you guys have already clicked on the link that was sent. Um, I will actually do a clickable link in the Facebook group. I should have done that already, but I'm sorry, I haven't added it to it. Um, but it, if you were able to find it just based on the sheet that I sent in the mail, uh, in your box. It's from Parker on the porch. Have you guys checked that out? What cute designs she makes. So I'm super excited about this. So it's, it is going to be a really cute prop that um, people can hold up and it will say first day of school or first day of first grade, first day of, you know, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. And then you can also make one that will say last day of so you can swap it out and it'll just be such a cute photo prop. Uh, I am super excited about that. Can't wait to even use it with my own kids. It's just, it's so cute. Um, June 24th, super excited about this too because I have actually never done this in my shop. I've never included this. Always had it on my like bucket list of things I wanted to add. So I was like, let's do it together. But have you seen those really, you, you saw the shirt in your box, right? And it's a, you know, adult large. Have you seen when you, a little kindergartner will have on this humongous shirt and it will say class of, you know, 2038 um, or whatever it would be. I got to look back up and see what this kindergartner year will um, be. My um, nephew is going into kindergarten this year, so I'm definitely going to make that for him. So between now and then, two weeks from now, try to find somebody that you know um, that has a rising kindergartner and maybe you can make it for them and it can be a sample for your shop. But these are so cute. So every year the child will put on, starting in kindergarten or whatever year they start, this adult large shirt. And it is so cute because at the beginning of the year you put it on every year up until they, you know, graduate. And just to see that one shirt kind of through the years is so, so cute. And, you know, all the different digitizers out there, you know, make their own versions of these. So there's lots of options. Um, I picked one. If there's one that you would prefer to do, that's fine. You don't have to do the exact same thing that I'm doing, but it's also a way for us to kind of work on that project together. And so that will be doing an applique shirt. So if you haven't done a lot of applique on shirts or whatnot, um, that's something that we can, you know, obviously do together. And um, the one that I picked was from the Itch to Stitch, uh, another great website, um, digitizing company. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to do, and it actually falls on July 1st, are bag tags. So bag tags have been, um, I mean, I'm sure they've been around forever, but they've been very popular over the last couple of years. Instead of, you know, taking someone's fancy bag, you know, book bag, you can just literally embroider a bag tag and add it to, you know, hook it onto the bag. That gives, you know, a book bag more life because then you can use it, you know, pass it down. You can, you know, sell it when you're done. I mean, whatever. Um, I've also seen some of the bag tags, you know, very cute added to like luggage or added to, you know, those bog bags, which are um, those like plastic rubbery bags that people take to the beach and pool. Um, adding bag tags to those, adding bag tags to like sport bags, lots of options for those. Um, and so I thought those would be really cute for us to work on. And what those also are, are um, basically patches. So once we can master, you know, the bag tags, then you can feel more comfortable doing patches moving forward too. So that was kind of my idea behind that. And that's from Applique and Embroidery Originals. Again, there's a lot of different bag tags. I just like the variations that that one set that I put on here is. And again, I will put all these links so they're clickable in the Facebook group so you can see them as well. 
So let me get back to um, where I can see y'all's comments. Um, yes, Rhode Island. Michelle says she loves Parker on the porch stuff. You know, I, I, it's amazing how I'll find something like that. And I'm like, how did I not even know this existed? And this company existed and she existed. Absolutely love it. Um, Kristen says, I haven't seen her, but haven't bought anything yet. Um, and then Denise, I'm assuming it's Denise, Miss Denise, 1258. Um, you love Parker on the porch. So I'm super excited. I love finding, you know, new digitizers. Um, I've had my tried and true that I work with. Um, but I love finding new ones along the way too. So do you guys have any questions? If you do, let me know. I know there's 13 of you guys hanging out right now. And so that's awesome. I feel like everybody has found us. Um, let me get my uh, item here. So these, um, we're going to do tonight the lunchbox. This is a Viv and Lou. And so I have a wholesale account with them. Absolutely love their stuff. Oh my goodness. Um, I've already listed in my um, Shopify site and I have not added to Etsy yet, but I probably will soon. Um, the different book bags and lunch boxes that they carry. I'm just keeping it real simplified this year. I'm not going to do a million different ones. Uh, and what I like, they actually carry one that's mint, solid mint, solid pink, and solid black. I love those because then you can be a little more creative with colors of your monograms. But then they also do have some similar to this lunchbox. Uh, well, some just like this lunchbox, right? And a, a few other patterns. Um, why do I love these? Let me tell you. I don't know if you've taken it out, if you've looked at it, if you, you know, moved it around and stretched it out. A lunchbox is a lunchbox, right? But not to those of us that embroider. No, ma'am. No. The reason why this is so great when you embroider is because of this. This flap right here, you guys, allows us to monogram this with absolute 100% ease. No questions asked. This is the easiest project that we will do together. But I wanted you to see it. I wanted you to really know the difference of something that's great to monogram and something that's not. There are some, honestly, that would come to me that would be like this and, you know, without this flap, say, right? And so they want me to monogram on this front piece right here. And to get a frame in there, uh -uh. <laughs> when you have fast frames, you can do it. But when it's a small pocket, that can really limit the size that you might be able to embroider based on what size fast frame you can put in there. If you have a single needle, that right there, it ain't happening. But when you have this, this flap, which is so amazing. I feel like, honestly, it was literally made for us to embroider on. Because honestly, what else is that flat for? I guess to keep the things that are in that pocket, I guess. Um, but this is amazing. These are so easy. Great addition to your shop, regardless of what type of machine you have. So, easy peasy lemon squeezy you can decide what you want to monogram on this tonight or when you do sit down to work on this i am keeping this for myself uh, it's something that i can use um you know heading out to the beach throwing you know a drink in um i love it the other reason why i love the flap is because i have done lunch boxes in the past where you know they're still pretty easy maybe it's just a simple you know lid like this but when you start puncturing through the um water waterproof area you, you're losing like some of the integrity of what the lunchbox was designed to do so i hate when i'm doing that because you can feel if you squish this you can feel there's foam in there there's like a foam it helps to keep things cool but when you start to embroider it which you could you could literally go through all that you really could we're not going to on this type bag, but if you had a bag that was just a simple, you know, flap straight to the inside, you definitely could embroider that. The only issue is you'll start to tear this lining when you go to take it off. You don't want to use sticky stabilizer on a lining like this because it will stick and stay. And you don't want that to be there on the inside of a lunchbox that's going to get food on it. Mm -mm. So again, this flap is amazing right it is amazing that it's on there uh, michelle says her in the hoop bags are great and i assume that you're talking about parker on the porch 
So yeah, I was actually going to do a pencil pouch with us um, that had a zipper and everything. And you know, I started looking at it. I actually purchased the the, the file myself to you know to um, to try it, and I just decided it was maybe a little more um, labor intensive than we would have to do our stitch outs. And the only other reason why I decided not to do it was I wasn't sure. I want to give you guys ideas that are easy for you to monogram, that are easy for you to sell. And I wasn't sure how sellable like a pencil pouch would be um, long term. Like, you know, I don't think in my group that would be something that would be, you know, people would be like, oh my gosh, I want one. But a lunchbox? Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, if you embroider, you will be given lunch boxes to work on and book bags to work on. People will be dropping them off. I always have to do a cutoff. Or two years ago, I loved what I did. I basically, this past year, I mean, we can't, I mean, whatever, right? Um, but two years ago, I pretty much called it my <laughs> back to school weekend. And in my group, I was, I allowed for, you know, one weekend, one week, uh, drop me, and I gave plenty of notice, drop your book bags and lunch boxes off, and this is the weekend to do it. Uh, and, and, because I was trying to just, if I can do like 10 of them all at the same time, that kind of get into the, to the motion of it, instead of like every once in a while, you know, another bag, another bag, another bag, or two days before school starts. Oh my goodness, I forgot to put Susie's monogram. So, anyway. I love these bags. I hope you will love these bags. You can choose what you want to put on it. You can put a monogram on it. You can put a name on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, whatever works for you. Right now, I am absolutely in love with the um, market font. Um, have you seen that from Etsy? So I was literally going to put, at first I was going to do the two inch and I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do the big old three inch um, because I think that's awesome. This is found on Etsy, and I, I'll put the link in the Facebook group um, when we are done. But you can put a monogram on here. You can, um, you know, whatever you decide, honestly. It's completely up to you. Um, but I'm going to put this. So now you do want to make sure that you put it the right way and don't put it upside down. I'm going to put this large name on here, and I'm going to do it in a fun, you know, pink color that I think will kind of pop. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and just show you. If you guys have questions, just please let me know. So all I'm going to do here is just find the center of this bag. And um, I'm going to do that with a pen. And I always, I use Embrilliance Essentials. I can give you a link. I also had a link in the back. It, it should be, yeah, there was a link on your printout that you um, got in your box. Um, if you don't have Embrilliance Essentials, that's fine. Use whatever you know program you have, but it's definitely what I recommend and have used for my entire embroidery career. So what I do is I always print out my designs because it gives me the grid. And I am going to just find the center of my design here. And I am going to mark it with a pen. So we've got three and a half, three and three fourths. And then I'm gonna go lengthwise as well. Looks like it's about eight and a half. So I'm gonna go four and a fourth. I found my exact center. So when I do that, I put a little pin. Can you see? Well, you can see the pin if I do that way, right? I put a pin in the exact spot. Then I take my grid. I will take that pin and put it through the center of my grid. See that? <laughs> can you see it? And then I am literally going to match the pin for the pin and then pull out the one from underneath. And now that is centered exactly on my bag. Um, yeah, center is huge, um, but that's why I print things out, Kristen, and it's a no-fail way to do it. So, let's see. I'm going to come closer and show you again what I just did. So just to give you a little bird's eye view or a close-up view. So I find the exact center. Do you see my pin right here? So it's pinned into this item. See that? And then what I do is I find the center with my grid, right? And I poke a hole with a pin straight through that grid. 
straight through that grid, right? So you see that pin. Now I match it, make sure, yeah, that's the bottom. I'm going to match that pin to that pin, right? And poke a hole in the exact same spot and then pull the bottom pin out. And now I know that that is exactly in the spot that I want it to be. Now I generally will do two pins to make sure. I'll tell you what, it's hard to pin in the air <laughs> to make sure it doesn't move. Um, if you need to remeasure just to make sure it didn't move too much, then you can do that. Um, see, I've got two pins in the place there. Um, I did not pin it to itself, so that's good. Um, but super easy to pin it that way. And it, it just ensures that you have it exactly where you need it to be. I'm going to close that part up so it doesn't keep flapping. All right. See that? So I just choose not to centering is such a pain. <laughs> I know, right? It is, but oh my goodness, it's so so much better to, to take all the time now than to put it on there and, you know, ruin something, especially if this is a client provided item, like gotta be careful. Um, Denise, I had learned a lot from you and I love my tin needle machine, but I have anxiety about starting Etsy account. Oh my goodness. Just start it. I mean, there's no anxiety to it. It's just a learning process. It really is. And I will be your cheerleader along the way. Let me know if you have questions. But honestly, the best thing to do is just jump in. Don't wait for it to be perfect. You can continually work on it as you go. Um, yeah, you got it. Do it. Um, yeah, Arvin, we got, you got to be good at centering. Centering is so key. It's so important. And that's why I print everything out that I do. Um, so sticky stabilizer, I do not recommend with this shiny type material because it is really hard to get it back off, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, if you have fast frames, if you are working on a multi-needle type machine, then you can use fast frames and you can add, um, your tear away to the fast frame and clip it on. So that is an option. Um, Kristen says I, I had to, um, have huge anxiety about Etsy. I haven't done it yet either. I've only sold at craft shows. Oh, you guys, come on, just do it. There's plenty of room. Come join us in the crazy world of Etsy and we'll we'll kind of work on it together. So fast frames is a great option if you have a multi-needle machine. If you are working on a um, flatbed single needle machine, then what you can do is what everyone talks about is floating. So you can actually take your, um, where is my, I was using it earlier. You can actually hoop your um, tear away. So tear away again, I definitely recommend tear away for this project. And um, I love the one that I sent you. It's the sulky tear away. Um, you can also use pre-cut sheets. So I do a little bit of both. Um, I have a pre-cut sheet here. Um, but the, I, I like the consistency of the um, one that I sent you. But I was just going to show you the two ways of doing this. So we can, I need to dial this back because I had a, what did I have on this? Actually, I don't know if I want to mess with that one. No, there's the other one. Um, I had some towels, so that was a lot thicker than just one little piece of stabilizer. So when you float something, you're literally going to just take the hoop itself with the stabilizer and hoop it. And then just do it as tight as you can so it doesn't move around. So all it is is hoop stabilizer. And then with that, when you want to float something, I'm literally going to find mine have little notches here and here in the center and then here and here. Now it's really hard to see because it's so dirty. <laughs> so excuse that, right? But if you can see past all the gunk here and here, and then same on the side and the bottom, there's little notches, right? So I try to do my best. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna use the grid, but I try to center it just at least to make sure that it stays straight. And so if this is the route that you're going, then you're literally 
you, you can baste it, uh, not baste it, you can spray if you want, but I generally don't when it comes to that kind of sticky, not sticky, uh, shiny material um, that's used on the interior of this. I, I just want it to just come off so clean. So what I'm doing is I'm just pinning, making sure that I am um, going around the um, design here. Another great reason for printing it out when I pin it, I know I'm not going to hit these areas with the machine because I haven't printed exactly how it's going to monogram or embroider. So if you can see closer up now, get that tag out of the way, I have added pins. It's hard to see that on, um, on this pattern, but I've pinned here, here, and here. So you can see all I have is hooped stabilizer, and then I have pinned my item straight to the top. Now you don't want to tear it when you do it. So you have to be careful with that. Um, but this is a great way to do it on any machine, single needle, multi-needle, however. So the other option, if you do like to work with um, fast frames, then what you can do is you can take a piece of stabilizer. I've got my towels over here on top of my stabilizer. Actually, didn't I just bring a piece over? Here it is. Um, and then have you guys seen these Repesco clips. They are super cool. Let me make sure it's working before I talk it up too much. And then if it is, I'll show you how it works. Okay, good, it is. So these are so cool and I love how these work. Have you seen these? So this is, I'm using tearaway. Um, so this tearaway I sent you is the sulky. I'm just using a cutaway, a piece, I'm sorry. A tearaway that's already um, pre-cut just because I'm being lazy right now. Okay, but Repesco Super Clips. These are so cool. So what I'm doing here, um, howdy from Admar, Kansas. I'm hanging out with you tonight while I finish a project. Awesome! Thanks, Christina. So these are super cool. So with Sticky Stabilizer, you can stick it just straight to the fast frame and it will stay. But when you have um, tearaway, you need to attach it. And I found these Repesco Super, Super Clips. And they work perfect. So you just literally take it here. You load up the, the clips. You can see the colored ones in there. I think it fits about six or seven in there. And then you literally take it, squish the things. You don't squish. You just put it in it. It's really hard to talk about what I'm doing, but that's what I do. So um, let me get my scissors. I'm going to cut this so it matches the size of the frame a little better. You want to leave a little bit of an edge so you can actually um, attach it, right? And then we're going to do it again. How many do I have in here? Yep, i got four more. So if you can watch, I'm going to take this side, take that, slide it on. Oops push the next one on, boom, fold this over, slide it in there. So you see that little mouth kind of right there that goes on top and bottom, get a clip in place and boom. How cool is that? Have you guys used these before? They're awesome. So I'm gonna do two more. <laughs> Doing this in the air, huh? That's a new skill. Um, get a clip and push, get a clip and push. And so now you can see I've got that piece on with these clips and these clips are reusable. So I continually use these when I'm done with this project, I'll just put these clips back into my little handy dandy, um, thingy bimajig. Um, Let's see, Helen says, wow, I love that idea because I'm thinking about getting fast frames but the sticky stuff was holding me back. Are the clips reusable? Yes, they're awesome. So I'll put a link for them um, in our Facebook group um, and just show you which ones that I buy because there's two different sizes and this is the one that's worked really good with my fast frames. Um, but yeah, I love it. You can actually, I, I've also done this before if I've needed to do, um, you know, use my um, no-show poly mesh. You can even do that with the clips on here. 
Another option, um, you'll see some people have those little itty bitty clips. Those are good. I've got some bigger ones, um, but I don't feel like these um, hold it as well. I use these more when I'm trying to bunch up some fabric to keep it out of the way. I use these a lot when I had a single needle, um, you know, trying to just get extra fabric out of the way. But these kind of work the same way. They're flat on one end. So on the bottom part, I can, um, you know, clip them on and do like that. And you've probably seen some that have the little itty bitty clips and I like those too. But I love how tight the super clips um, work. Repesco super clip. So that's two different ways. So if you do, if you decide to do it on your fast frame, on your multi-needle, then you can just do like I did, add your um, tearaway stabilizer, and then you'll do the exact same thing that I just did. You will pin the item just like you're floating it on top of that fast frame. So that's two different ways. With the fast frame or by hooping and floating your item on um on any of your standard hoops so that's why i love this project because it's perfect for single needle and multi-needle you can definitely do you know book bags all that good stuff with either machine um, you do want to make sure i'm just noticing that tag is literally in my field um, i'm going to get a different pink i thought i had it but i think i moved it um here it is I was doing these awesome um, fishing shirts today. I don't know if you guys, like I said, were watching live or not. And I am just so excited about them. I cannot wait for my customer to pick them up tomorrow. You know, sometimes I just have such pride in, um, in items that I've worked on. And that is, these are definitely one of them. I'll show them to you in just a second. So I'm just going to pull that color through. And add that to my sixth needle. I chose, I'm just choosing to do it straight on this frame here. If you're doing the fast frame, nothing changes. Um, Kristen said, so this may be a silly question and I should probably know it, but when you say no show poly mesh, is that just cut away? It is um, cut away that is um, specific for doing um, like shirts. So you don't want to see it from the other side. Actually, it's in your box. I sent you a sample of it and we'll use that when we do the t-shirts. It's called... I think soft and sheer from Sulky, but that is the equivalent to no-show poly mesh. That's what that material is. Um, it is a cutaway that is um, very light and um, you can't, you know, have you seen where someone might showcase a um, applique shirt and all you can see is the stabilizer underneath and it, oh, it's like drives me crazy or it's so hard and crunchy you feel like if that child leans over the whole thing would like crunch that to me is when it's not stabilized the best um, using like a no-show poly mesh is going to allow it to just be a comfortable shirt um, functional shirt and you won't see the stabilizer when you're looking at it using a white shirt now i used it even on these um, shirts that i was doing um these fishing shirts uh, but I just used several layers of it because it's black and I don't have to worry about it coming through. Let me just go ahead and show you this and how cute it is. Y'all, look at that. Isn't that the coolest? Yes, yes, yes. So, Kristen, I don't know. Um, dense design. Um, isn't that awesome? The only reason I used two pieces with this and then I actually used a tearaway as well is because this is so, so thin. Now, if you're talking about a dense design, I just did these um, applique shirts today and, um, you know, it's a big old applique on here and it's fine. So you can see I've uh, on the edges of this, that's where I ended up cutting away the, um, cutting away the cutting away. But it, can you see it on there? It's so hard with all the lights in here. Um, I need to... Um, Put my tender touch on the back so these are soft so that's why they're laying out um but that's what i use on absolutely every single thing that i do that's clothing everything um so these are super cute little whales that i did today um i'll show them to you i did a boy version and a girl version let me get one of each and then i'll show you um how 
sweet these are. <laughs> and then we'll do the, um, then I'll go ahead and stitch what we came here to stitch, but uh, how cute. Isn't that precious? Oh my goodness, that's the girl one. And here is the boy version. I mean, in that sweet. I love it. Yes, yeah, so Kristen, I mean, you'll hear different things from different people about what they swear they do or should do or can't do or only do. Um, but for me, no show poly mesh is all I need when it comes to do. I do a lot of children's shirts, uh, and that's what I've always used. Uh, on the ones you just showed, the dense designs, did you use one or two layers? Just one. I always only use one. Um, you know, I hoop it either in my Mighty Hoops or in my Durky Frame. So hooping is to me the biggest, or stay, making sure it's hooped properly, I think is even more important than the stabilizer that you use. Um, if, if you haven't hooped it where it's tight, um, then that's where half the problems are going to be. Um, but yeah, so I definitely only use one piece. Now again, the only reason I'd use multiple pieces on the fishing shirts is because they are so thin oh my goodness so thin so i knew i didn't have to worry about it showing through because it's black right if it was white i'd be like oh my gosh i don't want to put this much stabilizer on there because it's really going to show with the, any color like that I didn't, it didn't matter whatsoever <laughs> um you know it was left behind because you weren't going to be able to see it you're not going to see it through the black um, and I knew those really needed to be stabilized well. So let's put this on. I've got my color ready. Um, all right. I'm going to clear that design that I was doing. And um, here it is. Uh, that might be my other problem, not tight enough. How would you do a napkin? Um, so napkins... Um, I generally do those. Um, I don't want anything left behind. If you're talking about doing um, like linen napkins, I do, I do a, a bunch of those. You can look on my Etsy shop and see. Um, I generally will hoop those on this exact five by seven using tearaway uh, because I don't want any of that left behind. I don't want the stickiness. Um, it just it just depends. Um, but I want to be able to easily remove it when I'm done because that the the sheerness of the linen, um, you can see everything through. So you want to make sure that it is a tear away that you can easily get off. And I don't want it to be a sticky tear away. I want it to be just a regular tear away. Um, but I want to, I try to hoop them um, when I can. I think that's pretty important. Some people are in the, the boat of they float everything. If I can hoop it, I do try to hoop it um, because I think that does hold it better. And then I use spray adhesive. That's another definite. All right, so let's see. Let me find pain on here. Oh, let me also make it the right size. All right. Oh, I love this pink. I think it's going to be so cute. Well, now I can't decide. Maybe I want the lighter pink. No, I like bright. Um, light, bright, light, bright. I don't know. So again, you guys can put whatever you want on your bags. Um, my goal was just to show you, um, let's see. My goal was just to one, show you the difference that you will receive when it comes to different, um, bags and, and book bags and things like that. Um, but I wanted to show you what to look for, what makes it a good bag when you're wanting to embroider or you know where you can get bags that are good for embroidery. Again, Viv and Lou is a wonderful um, wholesale company. Um, but also, you know, just kind of wanted to talk you through how to either float it on a single needle or how you can use fast frames. Um, so I hope that helps. I'm gonna go ahead and press go on this. Uh, I'm gonna line it up first. So I'm using my grid and I'm just making sure it's lined up 100% over that. And then I still like to go back and forth since this is pretty big. I want to make sure that I don't cross any of the edges and that looks perfect. Um, and so I'm going to say stitch. Um, I'm picking my needle six for that color because it's so cute. 
And I'm going to run that at full speed because I know it can. So, um, the bond says I think I'm going to keep mine for me. I am too. And I'm going to try to teal color through to match. So let me tell you something about matching. I don't do it. I can't stand it. I hate matching colors. Let me say that again. I hate it. Um, I mean, I've got several teals or mints over there, but I guarantee you not a single one of them would match. I guarantee it. Um, so if a customer asks me, they're like, what would you suggest? Um, you know, if they give me a bag and they're like, what would you suggest? I will never suggest to match it. I didn't realize until I started embroidering how many shades of pink there were. Oh my goodness, I hate pink. Now, of course I love pink and everything in my room is pink and pink is what I use on everything. But when it comes to matching pink, it is next to impossible. Okay, let's talk about purple. I've got two purples on my wall of colors. Two, I have a light purple and a dark purple. And that is it. Now, of course, there's a lot of purples out there, but that is all I have literally ever needed. Two purples. Let's talk about the pinks I have over there. I probably have 25 different shades of pink. I hate pink. So, I can't wait to see yours. I can't wait to see your matching color. Uh, when you do match it, you need to share what color you use or what thread you use. Um, I have Floriani that I'm using for this one and I can share that color. Um, it definitely makes a statement your way. Just my craft room has teal or mint colors, but yours are right. Yeah, and I love teal colors. Um, and I might have one that matches. But you know what's so crazy is? I will hold up a spool of thread to an item. And I'm like, this is the perfect match. I love it. Awesome. I can't believe I have this match. And then I start stitching. I'm like, wait, this is dark. So sometimes on the spool, when you've got a thousand meters of it wrapped around, it looks a different color than when you actually get, you know, just the smaller threads on the item. Um, so that's hard. I'm trying to figure out what, okay. It like stitched the top and the left and but then anyway that was a weird way um so i can't wait to see oops. sorry it froze uh, i can't wait to see what you guys put on your bags um whether you do a monogram whether you do a teddy bear whatever you want to put on there and what colors you pick. Um, navy would actually look super cute. I like um, mints and navies. I think that looks good. Um, but I guess I always don't mind throwing in a, a bit of pink. Uh, a coral would look really good on this. Purple would even look fine. Um, but mine's pink. So. If you guys have any questions, I feel like it's boring just to watch the machine go. Um, I will make sure that I put on here um, information about anything we talked about, the, the Pesco clips and things like that. Um, if you have any questions about uh, anything in your box or um, the next few items, uh, if you want to get more of these um, lunch boxes or book bags, let me know. I can help you with that. Um, I will give you a heads up. I have a different Facebook group that has um, started specifically for um, selling blanks of things that I purchased. And I have just received 11 different shipments from Alibaba of samples. And I'm going to be showcasing those. Um, I, I had said today, but I just completely ran out of time trying to complete all my orders. Um, so tomorrow I will be going live in that group. It's called, um, really, really sad name, but like, I think it's just embroidery blanks. Um, but several people had asked, um, 
you know, where do I get my items? Could I possibly, you know, get more or could they purchase some from me? So I just decided this would be a way of, you know, when I'm purchasing items, uh, if it's something you think you would like to sell as well, then, um, then we can do that in that group. So i um, glad you guys were here tonight. Those of you watching on replay, I hope this was um, informative for you as well. Please remember any question that you have, put it in either the Facebook group or in the comments of this video and I will answer every single one of them. Uh, I make sure that I go through all my comments and answer any questions, give you links to things that you uh, might be looking for. Um, so just let me know uh, either you know tonight or if you're watching this two weeks from now. Um, Kristen says, when you added the tear away today, how did you layer that and why did you add that one? Are you talking about for the fishing shirts? If you're talking about this for the fishing shirts, I literally took my, um, I think I put it away. I literally took my Mighty Hoop and I laid all three pieces of the, um, yeah, the fishing shirt. I laid down the um, tear away. You can use any kind, uh, and I can link these. Um, I used these when I was making masks, so I would buy them in this like massive um, 500 sheet stack, uh, and this is what I used to make the mask uh, as my stabilizer. So these pre-cut sheets were really nice for that because I was making them like a mad woman. Um, so I still had some of these left over, but I would literally just lay this down. And then I was, you know, putting on the shirt, the um, no-show poly mesh. I was putting one piece and then I was turning the second piece on a diagonal to try to get some more of the crosshairs in it. And then I had this underneath it. I hooped all of it, the shirt, the three pieces of stabilizer all together in the Mighty Hoop. That's why the Mighty Hoops are amazing because the magnetic part of it just sandwiches whatever you have. It can take pretty much anything. Um, so that's why that one is key for doing items like that. Um, and, it, and it pulls it very tight. So I felt really confident doing those and they turned out better than I had hoped, honestly. Super excited. Um, All right, it's got about nine minutes left. So do you guys have any other questions? I know the first project is always a little um, um, more, but like I said, getting the skill set of doing lunch boxes and book bags is so big for back to school. So go ahead and start looking for ones you might like to offer, whether it be the Sear Supper ones, um, or if you like the ones that Viv and Lou have to offer. Um, I did not use a topper on those um, because they are, they were, it was flat as all get out. Only time you need a topper is if you have a huge nap um, or texture to an item. And there was zero to the um, fishing shirts. They were flat as can be. So a topper would have done nothing other than just be completely annoying to tear off. Um, I don't even use them for all towels that I do, but the 20 towels that I had to do today, uh, I was so like frustrated when, <laughs> not frustrated, but I've been doing these towels that are from um, Walmart. And they're, it's like a tight weave. I have not had to use um, water soluble stabilizer. I did use them. Um, but when I compared one without it, I realized I didn't need it. It was doing nothing. Well, then a customer brings me 25 of these. And the first thing I noticed was, oh my goodness, look how loose all of those loops are. That's like nightmarish for embroidering on. Can you see that? Can you see what I'm talking about? It's so loose. Like these little loops, you can actually see the whole loop. That is awful for embroidery because things just sink straight into these. So the only solution, the only way to do those is to use water soluble stabilizer. Um, so I don't think that was in your box, but I just used the um, Sulky brand. I'll show you. both of my 
my machines running with this. Um, one I was just using my five by seven frame and the other one I was using my, um, right, the towels. I had a terrible time getting the tear away from the woman. Um, well, now the tear away comes off easy, this stuff. I can't stand this on the front, but I had to use it for these. Uh-oh. Oh, well, I, I mean, I literally just took these upstairs and yeah snag city and they and they do they were snagging they snag on everything and whenever i get a snag i just kind of cut it just so it doesn't show um i literally went upstairs and, and took all the towels with me and sat down pull, this pulls away really easily the tear away but this oh it's popping off oh thankfully i'm done this is oh i can't stand it i guess let me take that away so if you see this it just slides right off. I'm not worried about little tiny pieces of it. I'm just not. It'll come off the first time somebody uses it. Or... So I don't really care about the back. Um, but all of this, uh, how annoying. So, you know, I try to yank as good as I can and get as much as I can. I, I don't know. I, I, if I don't have to use water soluble stabilizer, I don't but then you've got to go in like all these little o's and e's and, and just pop it out now i just take my um little fiskar scissors my little five inch scissors or my fingernail but you don't want to pick at it too much because then you're going to pull some of this stupid part of the you know towel up i can literally just take my nail there and pull it but it's you know i mean honestly each towel probably takes four minutes but darn if i'd not rather do something than pick out stabilizer so that's not my favorite thing to do so if i don't have to use stabilizer then i don't water soluble stabilizer so this is the one that i use this is salvi water soluble stabilizer and um it's just a really lightweight version i do have um a much stronger one Let's see where that one is. Um, so this is one um, I have on my bucket list to do. Uh, have y'all seen those little ornaments that are um, freestanding lace? Yvonne says I just spray a bit of water on it and wipe it off with a cloth. Yeah, I guess I've never wet mine. That's probably what I should do. Um, this is ultra salty. This is a much thicker version. Um, it says it's four times as firm, but um, freestanding lace. That is on my to-do list. I don't know why. I just really want to do some freestanding lace, um, but you can tell this is a lot thicker. Um, Denise says I use a spray bottle and spray it, then use a face to wipe it. Okay, I'll try that. I do still have some towels to do. So you can see this is a lot thicker. Um, I got this specifically to do um, with the freestanding lace that maybe we can all stitch together sometime. I found some really cute designs um, on Creative Fabrica. Have you guys looked at Creative Fabrica yet? Oh my goodness, I'll put a link. Um, it is awesome, all the different things that you can get. I actually have a link too for, um, to be a shameless plug, but I actually have an all access pass um, link that you can use. Um, check it out and see if it's something that you're interested in. Creative Fabrica has stuff for every single craft you could possibly think of. You pay one $19 a month, you have access to, you know, nine, a million different embroidery files, designs, you've got SVG stuff, you've got fonts, you've got kid activities, you've got coloring books. It is amazing. Crochet patterns, sewing patterns. It's amazing. I mean, it really is a collection of all things creative, all things crafty. So I'll put the link in the Facebook page too. Lisa says she loves creative fabric. Like the, the deal that you get with all the stuff, I actually have a video talking about it and showcasing a little bit. So check that out if you are interested in it. Um, this is the Ultra Salvi. So what I use, like on top of towels, is the water-soluble stabilizer. And um, it's just the regular salty. This is ultra salty. So again, it's from Salty, but it is four times as firm, heavy, strong. 
um, still comes out, you know, with water, still water soluble, but um, is, is used a lot. This is what's recommended if you're doing freestanding lace. So um, hopefully moving up towards the holiday season, um, we'll be working on some freestanding lace as a project. That's why I bought it. I just haven't done it yet. Pretty sure I bought it to do last Christmas and never did then, but I have a whole container of it. All right. Well, now we only have one minute left, so we might as well let it finish before we close up shop here. Um, again, any questions you have, please leave them for me either in our Facebook group or um, in, in below in the comments, and I will answer them for you. Hope you all having a good week. It's crazy that, like, I'm seeing all these posts of kids ending school this week, <coughs> and we are here stitching things for back to school. But now it's the time to do it. I actually saw um, somebody's Instagram site that was saying their cutoff for back to school items is July 1st. I don't have cutoffs that are that close, um, but they, they, they have a four week turnaround, this particular shop. So she said, if you want to have your items by August 1st, the cutoff for back to school items is July 1st. It's hard for my brain that to think about things that far ahead. But this is really helping me. I'm super excited because I will be working on, um, you know, making sure that my listings are ready for back to school. Actually, I had someone today in my Etsy shop buy a back to school dress. I kid you not. I thought that was interesting since we were starting today. Um, but it's one of my um, dresses that has a um, pencil on the bottom, an applique pencil on the bottom. So I thought that was crazy. Like literally today, I'm like, Today is like the end of school and they're buying a back to school. Like I just sent out some graduation shirts last week and then here we are. Isn't that awesome? Now tell me that pink isn't amazing. So cute. So super simple. I'll go ahead and just show you. I'm just gonna take these pins out. And whoops, dropped one there. I'll have to get that so my dog doesn't find it. And then just pull it straight off. And you can see how clean that is. And since this is a lunchbox, but this is not the part the food will go in. Um, I just try to, you know, pick out those little pieces. Tear away comes out so easily. And there you go. The back, the front. Awesome. Isn't that great? I mean, I can't wait to go to school and carry it myself. I love it. I was going to put in my group and ask if anybody um, wanted to be a sample, but then I just decided, you know what? I want to be the sample. Yay! Well, I hope you had luck if you were doing it tonight with me. Um, if you are doing this on replay, then that is awesome too. Um, oh, Denise, you'll have to teach me about how to do the freestanding lace. <coughs> I'm excited to try it. I have a long list of things that I want to try. Um, so yeah, don't you love it? You might rethink on about doing the matching color now, huh? Um, but super cute, super easy. These are just a go-to. Add them to your shop. For those of you that haven't started Etsy, you guys, that's part of the goal of this is to have some items that you feel confident putting on Etsy. So that's going to be... For you guys that mentioned you haven't started or you've been anxious about it, these next four weeks is your timetable to get to get started. And let me know if you have questions about that. All right, hope you guys have an awesome night. This was super fun, super easy, and I'll see you next week for our back to school photo banners. They are gonna be amazing. A little more time consuming than this project. Um, so maybe less talk, more work, we'll see. But hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching on replay, give me a thumbs up. All right, bye guys.